Hey everyone, welcome to Wicode. Where in this video, we're gonna learn how to create a TypeScript React app from scratch using Webpack and Babel. So we're not gonna use Create React App or Vite or anything like that. This is all gonna be from scratch. And here's an example of what we're gonna build. So it's just a little app component. When we click this button, it just switches among photos. And this is all done with this code over here, which is all React and TypeScript. So we can see some TypeScript code right here. And we're also gonna go over how the CSS modules work in here. So how the styling works we can see we have an app.module CSS file and a global CSS file. The app module CSS is specific to our app component, so we're gonna learn about how all this works. Um, and of course, this has live code changes, so if we change this to just something else and press that, we can see it instantly reloads. Um, let me change it back, press save, or save it again, it switches again. But we're gonna learn how to build this completely from scratch in this video. So to begin, let's initialize an empty directory as an ES6 MPM project. We can do that by running npm init es6-y. This will create a package.json file with the type set to module so we can use more modern syntax. Now let's install React, so npm i react. And of course, React is just a library, so we can install it with npm. And now we'll need to install React DOM, so npm i react DOM. And React DOM is a package that basically acts as a glue between React and the DOM. And we'll see more of that later. But so after we've installed these two, because we're using TypeScript, we also want to install some type declaration files for React. And type declaration files, or files that end in .d, .ts, these are files that don't contain any implementation information and aren't compiled to JavaScript files like TypeScript files are, or like .ts files are. Instead, the TypeScript compiler uses these .d, .ts files to point out incorrect uses of code, such as providing the wrong amount of arguments to a function or accessing a property on an object that doesn't exist, just things like that. And we can install typings for React and React DOM as development dependencies by installing at types-react and at types-react DOM, and then save them with dash D for development dependencies. And so whenever we install a package from the at type scope, remove this. So whenever we install a package from the at type scope, we are providing typing information provided in .d.ts files. So these contain the TypeScript declaration files for both React and then for React DOM. And now let's actually configure TypeScript. First, we're gonna actually install it. So it's just a NPM package called TypeScript. And actually I wanna install this as a development dependency. And now that we have TypeScript um, installed, we want to initialize this project as a TypeScript project by running mpx tsc dash dash init. Let me actually zoom in one more here. But essentially what this command right here, npx tsc init, that creates a tsconfig.json file and also fills it with some default values. We're gonna be using this tsconfig.json file for type checking and for also type declaration file generation. We're actually gonna use Webpack and Babel for the actual transpilation process. But to do, the, to do this, we need to set a few keys. And the first one is JSX right here. So if we uncomment this, and we want to set this to React JSX, and essentially this key here specifies what JSX code is generated. Next, we want to uncomment declaration right here and set that to true, and that will generate type files or .d.ts files from TypeScript and JavaScript files. Then we want to set emit declaration only right here, uncomment that to true, and that essentially makes it so it'll only output type declaration files and not JavaScript files. And then we also want to uncomment isolated modules and set this equal to true. And this ensures that each TypeScript file can be transpiled without relying on other imports. But so all of these are essentially so that we can use this configuration right here for type checking and also .d.ts file generation while we're gonna be using Webpack to actually transpile uh, the TypeScript code into JavaScript. And at the bottom, we also want to make a couple keys called include and exclude. And I'm actually just gonna paste them in right here. And so include specifies an array of file names or patterns to include in the program, and then exclude does the opposite. So you want to include everything in our source directory, and let's create that right here, which will contain our source code. And then we want to exclude node modules and any distribution folders. But this is essentially getting TypeScript set up. So now let's work with Webpack. And first thing we're going to do is install Webpack with MPMI Webpack. We're going to install it as a development dependency. And so essentially Webpack is a module bundler. And what this essentially means is it'll transpile our TypeScript and React code to JavaScript code that the browser understands 
and place it all in a small bundle file or a small JavaScript file. And next we need to install the package webpack CLI, also as a development dependency. And this is webpack command line interface and it provides a set of commands to increase the speed and efficiency when setting up a custom webpack project. And then finally, we want to also install webpack dev server as a development dependency. And this package will give us a web server to serve up our project or essentially our React code. But now to handle React and TypeScript code with Webpack, we also need to install something called a loader, and specifically a loader called Babel Loader. Let me paste them in here. So this is Babel preset env, preset react, preset react TypeScript, and then Babel Loader. And essentially a loader, let me run this real quick. So a loader is a function that Webpack passes code through to perform some form or some sort of transformation. The Babel Loader is a Webpack loader that transpiles JavaScript code. And then all these presets right here allow us to configure the Babel transpiler. So the env right here allows us to use the latest version of JavaScript. Preset React allows us to handle React code. And Preset TypeScript allows us to handle TypeScript code. And now that we've got that out of the way, let's actually create um, the HTML file to house our React app. And we're actually going to be doing this using a Webpack plugin called HTML Webpack Plugin. And we'll install this as a development dependency again. And so basically a Webpack plugin interacts with the Webpack lifecycle and the Webpack HTML plugin creates an HTML file to place our bundled JavaScript code into. So it'll essentially, Webpack will turn our TypeScript and React code into a single JavaScript file and then it'll place it inside an HTML file to be served up. But before we do all this, create our HTML file, let's actually configure Webpack. We're gonna do that in a file called webpack.config.cjs. And I'm just gonna paste in some code at the top here. And so the first thing we're doing is we're setting the mode to development. And setting it development sets the node environment variable to development and, it, and also enables meaningful names for modules and chunks for better debugging. So basically makes a good development environment. We set the target right here for the bundle to be web. As this is a React app, it'll be in the web or browser. Then we set the entry point to index.tsx, which will be the file to start build, building our bundle from. And then we have output right here which sets the output path for the bundled JavaScript code. So it'll essentially start here and then turn all these TypeScript and React code into a single JavaScript file called bundle.js. And now let's add the HTML Webpack plugin. So of course, this is to create the HTML file to place our bundle into. So at the top, I'm just gonna import it right here. And then in our plugins key, so we're gonna create a key called plugins like this, specify an array, and the value we're gonna provide is our HTML Webpack plugin. So now Webpack will add bundled JavaScript code to the template HTML file in the bundle. And let's create this file real quick. So it's just gonna be called index.html. And I'm just gonna paste in the HTML code for this. But essentially the most important element right here is this div with the ID of root, as that is the element that will house our React application. But now let's go back into our Webpack configuration file. And the next thing we want to do is configure Webpack to handle TypeScript and TSX code. And this can be done by setting a rule. And I'm gonna paste in this rule below plugins. So essentially we have this module key right here. And then to that we provide a set of rules. And what we're essentially doing is we're telling Webpack to pass all TSX, TS, JSX, and JavaScript files through the Babel loader, except for those in node modules. And we do that with the provided presets. And of course this is essentially turns our TypeScript and React code into something that the browser understands. And then finally, after we've done that, all we need to do is at the very end, pass resolve and set the extensions. And essentially this makes it here so when we import files into other files, we don't have to specify the extension. So if we're importing our app file or app component, for example, we just say import app. We wouldn't have to say import app.tsx. But so now that we've done that, let's start working with um, how to handle CSS. And to work with CSS, similar with TypeScript, we need to use a CSS loader. And so a CSS loader transforms CSS into a string and loads it into a JavaScript file. An example of CSS loader is a loader on NPM called CSS loader. So we can install this as a development dependency, but now we need a way to get these styles to be displayed inside an HTML page. And we can do that with another loader called the style loader. So I'm just gonna import that down here. So it's from NPM and it's called style loader. And the style loader essentially takes the output from the CSS loader and applies it to the DOM. Specifically, it takes the output from the CSS loader and places it inside a style tag. And I'll show you this when we've got everything running. 
But now we need to tell Webpack to use these loaders on CSS files. And to do that, we just need to create another rule similar to the one we have with our TypeScript and JavaScript files and all that. So just below it, we paste in another rule. And this says for, t for CSS files, use the style loader and the CSS loader. And note that the order here is very important. So we want our CSS loader to be ran before our style loader because first our CSS is transformed to a string and placed inside the JavaScript bundle file by the CSS loader. This output is then placed into a style tag by the style loader. And so loaders provided to use right here are executed from last to first. So here the CSS loader will be ran on the CSS files and then the style loader will be ran next. And so that's most of our CSS handled, but real quick, I just want to talk about CSS modules. So outputting the CSS to a style tag or a separate CSS file is useful, but it can lead to some issues with conflicts as it is a global style. And to fix this, we can use CSS modules. And CSS modules are scoped to the component that they're imported to. So if we have a CSS file, for example, called app.module.css, those styles will only be used inside our app component when we import it there. And by default, the CSS loader enables CSS modules for all files containing the following um, regexes, which I'll just paste right here. But essentially, we just need to make sure that we name our file if we want it to be a CSS module. Say for app, we do app.module.css, and this will treat it as a CSS file as opposed to if we just called it app.css. So, and we'll see that in action too as we keep going. But now that we've got our CSS handled, Next, we need to handle images, um, so or essentially assets. But so Webpack allows us to bundle up assets such as images, icons, fonts, things like that. And even better, Webpack has built-in asset modules that allow us to handle assets. So in other words, we don't actually need to install anything and configure additional loaders because Webpack can do this right out of the box. And so for this, once again, we just need to create another rule. And now we're saying for all these type of image files, we want to handle them as an asset and resource. And setting the type key to asset-resource tells Webpack to admit a separate file and export the URL. So for example, if we import a PNG file into one of our TypeScript files, Webpack will add it to the bundle and then ex export a URL to find it. And Webpack also allows us to customize things like the name of the asset. And so by default, it creates a hash name of it, but we can change this so it keeps its actual name by inside our output, so up here, create another key called asset module file name and we're going to create an images directory and then inside that we're going to create a the name keep the name of the file and then the extension but so that's handling images done now what we want to do is let's create a global type declaration file so it's going to be globals.d.ts and so the reason we need to do this is because we will be importing assets into our typescript files so we need to inform the typescript compiler about these assets so the way we can do this is just declare modules for CSS files, PNGs, and JPEGs. Of course, whatever module, whatever other assets you're using, you would have to do the same thing. But essentially using declare module right here tells TypeScript that we are defining types for files ending in .css, PNG, and JPEG. So now we can import these files into our TypeScript files and TypeScript understands what we are doing. So it won't show an error. But let's create our first CSS file. So I'm gonna create a folder called styles in our source folder. And I'm going to call it globals.css because these will be some global styles. And I'm just going to paste in the styling for this. But essentially, we have a class to center everything. We have a, we're styling a button element, images, and h1 tags. And this globals.css file will contain styles that are applied throughout the entire application. So any button will get this, these uh, attributes unless we overwrite them with a module. And same with images and so on. So now let's create actually a, our first module and it's going to be for our app component. It's going to be called app.module.css. And this of course will contain styling specific to the app component. So inside here, I'm just going to create a class called cursive and rh1 for the app component will be green as opposed to the globals where we're setting it to red. But so now we're basically done with that. So let's start writing our React code. And the first thing we're going to do is create our index.tsx file. And this is essentially the glue between React and the DOM. So let me paste in these files right here. So essentially, we just create a root element from our div with the ID of root, and then we render our app component into it. Note also we're importing our global CSS styles. So this will import the 
CSS style tag that will be applied throughout the entire application. And now let's create our app component that we're rendering. And so I'm gonna create another directory in here. It's gonna be called components. And the first one we're gonna create is app.tsx. And once again, I'm just gonna paste in this code and then go over kind of what we're doing. So essentially we have some state to handle which photo is currently being displayed. And when we click a button, so this button right here, it'll switch the photo. And we're displaying the photo right here. We're also using our class name of center, which comes from our global CSS here. And then we also have our, we're using our cursive style on this H1 tag. So we import our CSS as styles, so our app module, and then we can access the classes from it. So we'll do styles.cursive, which corresponds to this right here. And so of course, I also need to import all these, these images. So I'm gonna create another directory in here. I'm just gonna call it images, and I'm gonna paste these photos in. So these are the photos that we're gonna be using. We have our ocean, Postgres, tree, code, um, and these are all the images we're gonna to be toggling through inside our app component. But we're almost done now. All we need to do is just add a server to serve up the application. And if there was an error you saw right here, all I did was just refresh the TypeScript, or restart the TypeScript server, because it seemed like it couldn't find this file. But so now it found it. But now we just need to add a server to serve up this application. And for this, we're gonna use um, Webpack dev server. So we can install that. It's npmi webpack dev server, and it's for development. So we special tag on dash D. So this will serve up the bundle that we create, and we can configure this in here as well. And I'm going to do that. You do it, configure the server with the key dev server. And then what we want to configure is first the location of the bundle, which we have this set to our distribution. So right here, we're going to output this bundle to this location. So we want to make sure that our server can find this bundle to serve it up. And then we just provide a port. And I'm gonna do, this I'm gonna do 6788, just a random number. And now all we need to do is run this application. And so I'm gonna create a start script for this. So back inside our packs.json, create a key called start. And we're just gonna run webpack, serve, and then provide open, and then our configuration file, which is webpack, dot config dot cjs and so now when we run npm start webpack will open a new browser window and use this configuration to serve up our bundle so now we just need to make sure this works so if we run npm start let's see what happens and we get path is not defined so that's because yeah we haven't imported it so we need to do path equals require path just like that now let's try running this again and it looks like everything's working so let me just bring this down here and here's our application. So I think I'm zoomed in a bit actually. So if I zoom out, this is what it looks like. Uh, we can click through and switch. And now let me show you what some of our bundle has done. So if I inspect this HTML, we can see first our global styles. Let me zoom in and I'm gonna undock this. So we can see our global styles, which come from that globals.css file we created right here inside this style tag. Here's our bundle that's being served up. And then we have our, these are the styles that are specific to our app component. And notice how we created a module right here. So this class name is essentially some random bunch of characters. And if we check our app component in here, we can see the class is this random thing. And this is essentially how Webpack will handle modules for us. But yeah, and we can see also we set the style as red for H1 tags, but because our app module has the H1 set to green, that's actually what it's set to right here. But yeah, so this is my video on how to create a React TypeScript app from scratch. Um, if you like this video, please consider downloading my Chrome extension called Witceptor. Link is in the description. But besides that, thank you for liking and subscribing, and I hope to see you in the next one. Have a good one.